In today's machine learning video, we're going to be covering the ridge regression. We're going to be covering a little bit of theory behind it before we end up coding it in a Jupyter notebook within Python with the help of the scikit-learn library. So make sure to stay tuned if you want to learn about this algorithm. Now, a few things to call out before we go into the coding. This is also called L2 regularization, which might sound a little bit familiar to you guys. I made another video on the lasso, which is going to be considered L1. Now, with a L1, uh, essentially coefficients of features go to zero. With an L2, it keeps them small, but doesn't go all the way down to zero. So a little bit of difference between both of them. But the reason why like L1 and L2 uh, really exist is to try to help improve models. Uh, there's an issue out there, what is called overfitting. And essentially what this does is simplify the models. So that way they can perform better with exact test data. Now with that theory out of the way, Let's start coding. All right, so load up your Jupyter Notebook. Let's get started coding. So first thing we're gonna do is bring in some mock data. So this is pretty easy. You can just do from sklearn.datasets import make regression. And I also know some people mentioned um, for me to use some real data sets. Well, this one was prepped a little bit earlier before that. So I do apologize. I'll work a little bit better on importing them in over here. Just don't wanna have the hassle of downloading data sets for you guys like to go grab another link. So we'll work around that. Um, so essentially make regression, we're gonna fill out a few different parameters. We have samples, we can have features as well. Just gonna fill out some basic stuff over here. Uh, so that way we have our data ready to go. I'm gonna do a random state. We're gonna use Jackie Robinson's number 42. You see that used a lot in the examples as well, posted online. And then we're gonna put an effective rank equals two. And don't worry about uh, the make regression too much, um, but this is gonna generate your data. I'm also gonna build a few new cells. Okay, and this also has our X and Y, which you see in other videos on like how we split our different data up. Our X is gonna be our features and then our Y is gonna be our targets. All right, so now that we have this in, we can do our basic stuff, right? So first thing we're gonna do, sklearn.model selection. Try to guess what I'm gonna bring in. We're gonna bring in train test split. Need that in every one of your uh, machine learning problems. Okay, now we're gonna do X, whoops. Now we're gonna do our X train. We're gonna our X test, Y train, Y test equals. And we're gonna throw our train test split in. So train test split. Then we're gonna put X. Y test size equals 0 0.2. And this one will do a random state of 19. Close that off. And we now have our data that is split between our training and testing data sets. Great. Um, one other thing that we need to do before we bring in our ridge is we're gonna have to scale our data. Now, one more thing we're gonna have to do before we run our ridge regression is we're gonna have to standardize or normalize our data. So I'm just gonna bring in our standard one more time. God damn. All right, so one more thing that we need to do before we start running our ridge regression, uh, we need to standardize our data. Pretty easy, there's something called standard scalar and that's in uh, sklearn preprocessing. So from sklearn.preprocessing import standard scalar. That's so I don't know if this ran or not. It's like a, I'm just gonna put this down below. This one's kind of blank. So we have that now and we'll put scalar equals and either type this out or copy it either way. I have your scalar. Great, now once we have this, we're gonna have to fit our data. So we're gonna have to fit transform our train and also test for our X side of things. Just fun. So just do x train equals and then just put scalar like double tapped the caps lock, but uh, we're gonna put scalar dot fit transform. Just throw your x train in here again. And um, we can run this over here, shift enter, and we're gonna do the same thing for our x test this time. So just throw your test in here copy, paste, and your training and testing 
um, features are now going to be scaled, which is great. So now that we have all this done, which isn't too bad, right? Like about eight, nine lines of code, we can bring in our ridge. So from sklearn.linear model imports ridge. So now our ridge is going to be in here. Now we have to call our ridge. So I'll just say ridge equal ridge like this. And I know I misspelled it. I'll fix that in a second. So there we go. Boom. Now ridge is over here. Let's fit our data. So dot fit. This time we're going to do our training data set. So we have our X train and also our Y train. Great. Now we have fitted the regression uh, for our training data set. I know it's a little bit different than this fit transform. Um, we're looking at X's on this side of things or features. Uh, this one we're fitting right X train and also our Y train. Um, okay, now what we're gonna do is take a look at a few different metrics. So all we have to do over here is from sklearn.metrics. We're gonna import in a few others. We're gonna bring in our mean absolute error. And these are just some of the common stuff that you end up seeing with regression problems. And we can also have our mean squared error and then our R2 score. There's other things that you could take a look at as well. And you don't even need to import an R2 score because you could just uh, run it without this sklearn metrics, a different name for it. But I prefer just throwing in uh, over here just to stay a little bit organized. Um, and I like the naming convention. So but one more thing we have to see before we can evaluate this model is you have to do a Y prediction. So Y pred equals ridge dot predict and then just throw in your excess. And this might be a little bit confusing to a few people, but essentially we're gonna have a Y test and we have to compare our Y test to the prediction. And the only way you do that is by putting our X test data. So throw that in over here and let's start finding out how this model runs. So all you have to do essentially is just copy these over here. Then you can just keep it super simple, right? I'll just put in your Y test and then you just can put in your Y prediction, right? Um, I guess I could have just typed it out, but I'm just going to paste that anyways. Okay. And we get 3.018 on this instance and let's do it a few more times, right? So those are mean absolute. So in our mean squared error, we have 11.33 and then we'll do it one more time. Let's do it for our R2 score. So grab your R2 score over here, grab the end of this over here and 0.927. Um, so this is a pretty good R2 score that you wanna get closer to one if possible. Now, I couldn't tell you how well this mean absolute and mean squared areas because I don't see this underlying data. And um, we'll see how after we do some hyperparameter tuning if we can slightly improve this, which isn't always the case with hyperparameter tuning, but we should be able to, I believe. So one thing that you're gonna have to know with ridge uh, regressions is essentially we're going to be taking a look at it out a value called alpha. Now your alpha value can go in a pretty large range, right? You can go all the way close to zero. I've seen over 100 with this instance. And essentially what this is going to allow us to do is change some of these coefficients in our uh, model closer to zero. Our lasso, which we talked about last video, will take some of these coefficients to zero. Um, but our ridge will not. So a little bit distinction between L1 and also L2 regularization. Sounds complicated. It It is a little bit, but just remember, lasso, zero, ridge, no zero for your coefficients. And uh, hopefully that helps you out with the data science interview. All right, so now we're going to put in a param grid over here. Uh, very basic stuff, right? So we're just going to be focusing on our alpha value on this side of things, but that's the best bang for our buck. And we're gonna start off with some very low values. So we'll say like 0 0.001, then 0 0.01, 0 0.1. Then we can have like 1.0, 10.0, and then 100.0. And so now we have our param grid. Before we do some hyperparameter tuning though, one more thing, we're gonna to have to bring in our grid search CV. So from sklearn, the model selection, import grid search CV, just like that. And now we can do our CV. So one thing that I do all the time is I'll just put our model name and then I'll put CV at the end of it. It's just a habit I've generated over time. 
and we'll have our grid search CV in here. First thing we have to do is put our model. So we defined ridge a little bit earlier. We can throw our ridge. Then we have our param grid. So grab your param grid, throw it in there. Uh, we're gonna set our CV value. I'm just gonna do three because we're gonna take this three and multiply it by how many values are over here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So we're gonna do this run 18 times. This can balloon up really fast, especially if multiple parameters. And if they're in this, uh, because you're gonna multiply it out. Um, so I usually do a three or five on these instances. And then we're gonna do end jobs equals negative one. Throw that in here, boom, and that is gonna be going. Um, so to actually fit our model, we're gonna have to do this once again. So you remember over here, uh, ridge.fit, copy this, or just type it out. And I'm just gonna put our CV over here. Probably should take 30 seconds or so, or by the time I finish talking. Okay, so we have this ridge CV over here. Now let's see how this performs. So uh, I'm just gonna do Y prediction two, and we're gonna say that's equal to ridge CV dot predict. And then you can throw in your X test over here, right? And then essentially we can grab these values all over again. So I hope these work properly and we get a little bit more of an improvement. We'll just throw a Y prediction two and we'll copy the other two as well. Okay. And lastly, our R2 score, throw that over here. And here's our results. So 3.08, 11.34, and then 927, so 927, 11, three. So essentially the same exact results between the two. And if you wanna see specifically, you know, like what parameter worked the best, there's a few different methods to do that. Uh, what's pretty easy, you can just go ridge CV, and then you can say best estimator, like this. And it says our alpha value closer to zero was the best. So I'm curious, like, if we go even lower, if we get better results or not. Um, it won't take too long to rerun this. So I'm just going to rerun these cells and see. And this is the fun part about hyperparameter tuning, right? You keep messing up. You keep messing with your parameter grid, and you will get better results over time. Uh, so this will take a little bit longer, which actually loaded really fast. Um, so same exact score there, right? I don't think our estimator is gonna change. Well, actually it went closer to zero and um, our score isn't really improving on that side of things with the specific alpha value. All right, so we can do a few other things too. We can take a look at our intercept and also our coefficient. Now, since we did hyperparameter tuning, it's gonna be like one step farther. So I showed you how to do this best estimator. All we're gonna do is go over here, do dot intercept. Another way you could do this is make a new model uh, based off of the results from over here and run it again, fit it, do intercept, or you can just do this, right? Um, and that doesn't work because I don't have an underscore then. So you can see our intercept on this case is gonna be 0 0.15, very, very small value. Then if you wanna see the coefficient, you can just go over here like this, but coefficient like that. And then here's our coefficient. So we have a 4.3, a 5.08, 7.66, and then a 2.89. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something new. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel. It's 100% free, but it does allow the channel to grow. And it also shares the video with other people on YouTube that want to learn data science, right? So please subscribe if you have not already. Now, a few other things. I did use this ridge regression within my final answer for my Kaggle housing project. Now the video isn't out yet, but just shows you how powerful this algorithm is. Now the vid next video in the series that I recommend you checking out is going to be the elastic net regression. It's kind of a mixture of the ridge and also the lasso or also known as L1 and also L2. And you can check out the video right over here when it's public.